Hi, my name is Rowan Henderson and I'm a senior advisor in the curatorial and collection research section of the National Library of Australia. I'm joined by Philip Jackson, program manager in curatorial and collection research. Welcome to this discovery video in which Philip and I will explore the prompt collection at the library. Philip has worked with the library's Australian printed collections for the last 10 years, and he will be sharing some of the prompt collection highlights in this video. The rich culture of Australia's First Nations people has included performance for tens of thousands of years. The National Library of Australia acknowledges these first Australians as the traditional owners and custodians of this land. We give respect to the elders, past and present, and through them to all Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So what is the prompt collection? The Prompt Collection is a collection of collections that relate to the performing arts in Australia from the 1880s until the present. It's a part of the library's ephemera collection, held in a special stack area. And what's ephemera? Ephemera is printed material that is usually created for a particular purpose and not intended to be kept. In the library, we use the guide that it's usually less than five pages long. It's mostly printed on paper, but can also include objects like hats, shirts and badges. It's often printed on flimsy material and can be difficult to conserve. As the prompt collection relates to the performing arts, it mainly contains programs, but may also, also include subscription, brochures, flyers, invitations and tickets. Because of their size, posters are stored separately and magazines in the library's serials collection. The prompt collection is vast. It currently contains 5,269 collections and uses over 300 metres of shelving. It documents a huge range of topics such as prominent individuals in the performing arts, organisations and groups, venues and performances. And it covers genres such as pop, rock and folk music, opera, circus, actors of stage and film, comedians, orchestras, theatre companies and performing arts schools. The people and places covered might be known in Australia and around the world, or they could be completely local and unknown elsewhere. The performers might not even be Australian, but if they performed in Australia, they could be in the collection. And why does the library collect performing arts ephemera? The library collects this material so that the Australian community can, now and in the future, discover, learn and create new knowledge. The library's role is to develop and maintain a library collection, including a comprehensive collection relating to Australia and the Australian people. The library collects ephemera to document life in Australia, what has happened, where it was and who was involved. In this case, the collection documents the performing arts, to show what is being performed or created in Australia at any point in time, by whom and where. And how does the library collect it? The library actively looks for ephemera to collect, but also relies on the public and collectors to let us know what is available. We also work with other libraries so that they collect material relevant to their state or territory, while we collect items of national interest. If you're a collector and would like to offer items to the library for this collection, you can do so through our website. So how can you find out what is in the prompt collection? The library has created a handy new finding aid, which lists all the collections under headings such as individuals, performances and events, subjects and venues. You can explore it by searching our catalogue for the Guide to the Australian Performing Arts Programs and Ephemera Prompt Collections in the National Library of Australia. If you're interested in donating ephemera to our collection, it would be appreciated if you could check our lists first to make sure we don't already hold the same material. It's also important to remember that there is other material in the library's collection relating to the performing arts that is not in the prompt collection. This material could be found in the manuscripts, pictures and oral histories collections, as well as in the library's extensive collection of books. You can search our catalogue to discover these other collections. And now Philip is going to take us through some of the highlights of the prompt collection. Prompt is a theatrical term relating to an off-stage reminder for an actor or singer of the lines that they have forgotten. And although it isn't exactly an acronym, it may have been something of an in-joke to adopt this term for the National Library's collections of programs and other performing arts memorabilia. Our collection is arranged into many collections by subject or topic which may be the name of a performer or performing arts company. The collections range all the way through the alphabet. We have things from A to Z, from ABBA um, to Charles Zwa, who was an Australian songwriter, composer, 
lyricist, pianist, music director, who mainly worked in England in the, from the 1930s to the 1960s. He did the music for All Square, which is included in this program here. And his name appears in one of the checkerboards on the front of the program. There may be earlier items, but mainly the collection consists of material from the 1880s and onwards. Um, in the performing arts exhibition that we've got on at the moment, um, there's a thing by Plant Holt, who's one of our most important early performers and impresarios. Um, that exhibition shines a spotlight on the National Library's performing arts collections. There are prompt files for Australians who have achieved great fame overseas, such as Dame Nellie Melba. Um, in the show, there's a 1902 ticket from Melbourne, which is her name, hometown and where she got her name from. And um, this is a program from the, sec the First World War um, for a charity concert for um, Polish refugees. And as well as having achieved great fame overseas, where in London they had the beach, the Peach Melba was named after her by the great chef Escoffier. Um, in America, there was even a packet of cigars that was named after her. So this is a Fleur de Melba cigar box a thing, which is probably not a very appropriate thing for a singer. Um, other performers who are featured prominently in On Stage are Robert Helpman, um, and he actually danced in this uh, memorial matinee for Anna Pavlova. He did a duet with a Russian ballerina from Swan Lake. And at the other end of his career, um, there's a program for his state funeral. Um, where you can find the eulogy was delivered by Don, Don, Don Dunstan, the former state premier of South Australia who, and a strong supporter of the arts. Barry Humphreys is another Australian who achieved great fame over the seas. Um, these are some items from the prompt collection um, relating to an exhibition of her frocks. Um, Kate Blanchett, as we, for her, we cover her stage performances rather than her work as a film actor. And for Kylie Minogue, um, we concentrate on her live performances rather than um, her recorded sound, um, which is really looked after by the National Film and Sound Archive. And this is from Kylie Minogue's 1991 tour. Opera front files include Dame Joan Sutherland and Richard Bonning. Um, Dame Joan um, also had some food named after her. This is a, rest, uh, a menu from a restaurant in Wellington and there's a spinach fettuccine named after her as well as the dessert at the end of the menu which is called La Stupenda which was her nickname. And the other, as well as programs we have all sorts of material so there were also some stamps issued to honour Dame Joan a few years ago as well. Um, there are other opera companies in the collection as well as um, Opera Australia, the big company. So there's the Pinchgut Opera, um, which is a smaller opera company that concentrates mainly on Baroque music. Um, so this is a program from uh, work from 1778, which those they performed for a, a, a rare time in Sydney in 2015. Uh, ballet programs from the uh, we have things from the Ballet Russe, who were one of the first um, big ballet companies to tour Australia in 1936. Uh, the Borovansky Ballet. Um, Borovansky was. Uh, came from overseas but stayed in Australia for a long time and did much to um, establish Australian ballet. Um, and for the Australian ballet, we've got programs here on display from the early 1960s and then 2000. This is a program honouring um, Graham Murphy. Um, there are things from Bangara, 
um, as well, the Aboriginal Dance Company. Um, in the exhibition, there's a full-size um, copy of the poster for this program, um, Praying Mantis Dreaming, um, with wonderful artwork by Libby Blaney. And then there's a much more recent program there for Skin, which is a program that, from, by Bangara that examines family kinship. Uh, Australian Theatre has a huge range of material in the prompt collection. We've only got one program uh, here on display, which is the Bell Shakespeare Company's um, first production of Hamlet in 1991. Um, the Tivoli Theatre was a big um, circuit that was linked to J.C. Williamson, who was known as The Firm. They were a huge company that was set up in 1888. 1882, um, and they ran theatre pretty much in Australia till 1976. Um, in these two programs here are from 1939, um, so and they brought in people like Anna Mae Wong, who was a um, actress from Hollywood, and the Mills brother, who were African American singers. Um, so. The Tivoli also in the 1940s and 50s um, were a lot more risque than you might expect from that conservative period. Um, there are programs with chorus girls and can-can dances and that sort of thing. Um, we've got musicals such as Jesus Christ Superstar. There's a program for 1972 with a, a ticket. Um, and instead of Phantom of the Opera, well, well, we do have that as well. We've got Fan Toad of the Opera, which was a Brisbane parody of it um, from 1991. And Wicked, um, a, a modern play. And of course, um, Tim mentions Matilda is on display in the onstage exhibition. There is material relating to traditional circuses um, such as Ashton's, who were established in 1932. Um, and this particular program has a little caption on it. Col and I went in 1967 and it was a very good show. So programs can be mementos of a performance with a personal touch. Um, and the, more recently, a, a more modern circus is Circus Oz. Um, this is a program from the seasons um, in the early 1990s. Um, at, as well as, um, so circus Oz don't include any um, animals in their circus, but there are uh, animals in the performing arts collection, such as Topsy, who was a performing horse who could count, identify colours, play cards, do magic, magic tricks. Um, Topsy toured Eastern Australia, um, performing mainly in the Gold Coast region in the early 1950s. Um, this little item um, indicates that she gave command performances for horse lovers like the Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip in 1952, 54, and the Queen Mother in 1958. There are also performing arts events for festivals, the Adelaide Festival, um, that's from the first one in 1960. And then there's the, the Garden of Earthly Delights um, from the F Adelaide Fringe Festival um, from only a few years ago. And the National Folk Festival, there's a poster from that in the onstage exhibition. And um, in the prompt collection, there's a, um, a, a media kit for the 50th anniversary of the festival um, in 2016. So the festival started in 1967. The prompt collection contains a, a huge range of highly significant, evocative, beautiful and fascinating material. And whatever your per personal interests, may be there is probably something in it that will amuse or entertain you.